Hey there, welcome to a special edition of Lock on Astros. I'm going to break down Dusty's first words to the press as he arrives at spring training. Let's listen to what the manager has to say now. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Veer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. Hey there, everybody. Welcome in. This is H-Town Wheelhouse with Locked on Astros. And we've got some press that we want to share with you guys an interview with dusty baker as he arrived to camp if you're on social media you may have seen it but look you can find me at h-town wheelhouse on twitter instagram and tiktok you can find the show at locked on astros on twitter instagram tiktok and facebook you can also find me at stros 411 on twitter instagram and facebook always positive always stros remember we are your team every day and make sure you make us your first listen get us on your apple google spotify odyssey or wherever you get your podcast free and easy to listen to wherever even subscribe to our youtube channel so what i want to bring to y'all on this special episode is there are two six minute clips where dusty baker is going to talk about he's just going to answer some questions and so i'm going to just introduce this first clip here in a second but dusty baker's coming back and Recently at his Living Legends, um, MD Anderson uh, Cancer Center, I guess, gala that he was a part of, he had a question and answer. And he said, look, I told you all, if I was going to win one, I want to win two. So he has got his eyes and his heart dead set on a back-to-back title. And the entire team and the entire organization understands that it's a tall task. But I love the words that Dusty shares with the press. And so what I want to do is I want you to listen to what he has to say. At the end of this clip, I'm going to come back and give my thoughts on it. And then we'll go into the second six-minute segment. Great insight. This is insider straight from spring training um, interviews. And this is just all the press around him asking him questions, literally, as he first steps foot on the campus of the West Palm Beach Um, ballpark where they share a facility with the Nationals. So without further ado, let's listen to what Dusty Baker has to say, and I'll break down a few things, and then we'll move on to the second clip. Enjoy. Yeah, it feels great. I mean, this is uh, great weather. Um, It was a very short winter, but a very fulfilling winter, and uh, you know, it feels always good to come back and see the guys, you know, you see what kind of shape they're in, you see who worked, and you see who matured from a boy to a man. I mean, you, uh, uh, this is this exciting, exciting time of the year. Was it kind of weird not being here the first day? Uh, yeah, it was very weird, very weird, but you know, I, I got summoned to do something else. And so, um, you know, to help out some people and uh, to help out uh, NAACP uh, one night and help out, uh, to raise money for, for cancer, which which I'm, I was involved with both. And um, yeah, it was a little strange, but I'm hoping I don't miss any any more time because I don't think I've ever missed a day in spring training, uh, especially a personal day. So it's okay. I just hope my guys don't find me for coming in late. What was your anticipation just to get here coming off the uh, first time you're coming to camp as a, a World Series champion? Well, I'm just back. trying to figure out how we're going to do this uh, and make it number two. You know, I mean, you can't live on on the laws on the past. Um, I mean, you gotta you gotta think about the present and what you gotta do and the different and how it could be difficult. There's other teams that have uh, gotten better. Teams, everybody's shooting at us. You know, which is cool. When I think about you know some of the great managers of the past, Red Auerbach, and how they must have felt going for eight, nine, or ten. Here I am going for number two. Or, or you know Pat Riley and this just just you know some of the greats and like the Warriors now you know I'm out there with them and uh, you know I 
see how they go gone about their business, you know, and uh, you use uh, the championship when things are going poorly, you know, to, to recall that feeling. Uh, so, and you know, they're not always going to go good, but you just got to stay positive and stay focused. What about the opportunity to do something that hadn't been done in only a quarter of a century? And that's repeat. So it's first time since 2000 when the Yankees did. Well, that's what I, that's why I'm here. You know, yeah. I always said if I win one, I want to win two. And so I'm in a position for us to win two back to back. I realize that it's a very difficult situation, but hey, uh, brothers have done it. Um, and I'm hoping we're prepared to do it. How much time did you give yourself to kind of reflect on the year? Once the season ended and decompress a little bit? Uh, just to not much. Yeah. You know, um, um, you know, it's, it's kind of. We didn't have time to decompress too much, you know. Um, it, it, it was a matter of being more thankful than anything. And, uh, and you go home and then, I mean, people wanted a lot of my time, a lot of my energy. I gave some of it and tried to save some, hopefully, for myself so you don't run out of energy this season. So, um, yeah, I love this team. I love these guys. I love the, you know, the city. And uh, if anybody knows how to do it, these guys, they know how to win. That's what it's all about. Hey, hey. What do you about team? Dana Brown coming in? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I met Dana uh, years ago. I haven't spent a whole bunch of time with Dana because he's been busy trying to catch up on things. I've been busy in and out of town since then. So, you know, we'll, I think he's going to do a great job. You know, I mean, he's, uh, um, he's done about everything in baseball. You know, uh, uh, you know, he helped put that, that Braves team together. And not only the, the major league team, but he's, you know, they have one of the best minor league systems in, in, in baseball. I'm sure he'll, he, you know, he'll put his mark on this one, too. Dusty, you've got 11 guys going to WBC. I guess, is that, given the rule changes, and given, and given what you guys are going to have to do in spring with the rule changes and the pitch clocks and everything like that, turning it off, that many guys are going to be going to the WBC, and how are you plan on managing uh, kind of that? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about the pitch clock and stuff like that as much as, you know, um, try to figure out how to get these guys ready, you know, and how to get them uh, in shape for the WBC, which I had talked to Kyle Tucker earlier, and I'll talk to each one of them, um, you know, what they're going to need uh, early, probably play them more early than I would have ordinarily. And so, um, you know, to get them ready so that they can play maybe eight, nine innings, where before you, you program them like five, two at bats, six, seven, day off and then nines at the end but they or try to figure out which guys are going to get together um, uh, very quickly they don't need as much time and I, I was telling Kyle that um, I had Barry Bonds and then Barry would get ready in two weeks and then it took me a couple years to learn that um, and then he'd go cold and then I, I, I had to sit him down and back him off and then reprogram him you know, for the season. So um, part of this is an experiment. Part of it's going to be what I've learned from my past. So there you go. Dusty Baker is talking to the media and he says, look, it's tough to come back and win it again. Everybody's gunning for you. The other teams have basically gotten better and they basically you are going into the season with a target on your back. He did talk about how he didn't have much of an offseason. It's kind of comes with the territory, and we understand that. And then he was asked by, I believe it was Chandler Rome of the Houston Chronicle, about the WBC and having 11 players in there and how is that going to work with spring training and the changing of the rules and getting them ready. Does that have an effect? And, you know, he, he clearly – you could tell that he thinks, wow, that's kind of a big number. And, yeah, it's – you know, it may – disrupt some things he's he's more concerned about making sure that um his players get you know ramped up that they are just ready to go he um talks about and it may be in this next clip where he talks about kyle tucker um getting ramped up earlier like sooner rather than later um but while i have your attention i want to make sure that we um talk to y'all about this fan duel let me tell you about fan duel the NBA season is at its midpoint. It's All-Star Game weekend, and it's America's number one sports book because new customers right now get the no-sweat first bet 
up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. So just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today. It's safe, it's secure, and it's easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line, two-point scores, and threes drained. As FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance to get an even bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss out on this chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in first bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. So let's get back into this. Um, the second clip that I'm going to share with y'all is Dusty Baker, and he's going to talk about Hunter Brown. He's going to talk about Lance McCullers. He's going to talk about the center field competition, um, how much longer he has in the backup catcher situation. So let's go ahead and listen to Dusty in his words, and I'll break this down before we get on out of here. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Um, this is H-Town Wheelhouse. I'm with Locked on Astros. Remember, we're your team every day. And remember that after you make us your first listen, make sure you make Locked on MLB Prospects your second listen. That's MLB Prospects with host Lindsey Crosby. He's a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you can get your um, podcast. So check that out. So let's listen to part two of Dusty Baker's interviews. He, you know, he threw a bullpen Tuesday, and um, you know he's a little sore, you know, which is to be expected. So. What are your plans for Hunter Brown? Hunter Brown? My plans for Hunter Brown is to win. Yeah, and 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 then we'll see where we are innings wise at, at a certain point in time, and see how he feels. And like I said, he's he's about to go on uncharted territory himself, and so it's all. It's a learning experience for us. Hey, hey. You said, Lance, you. you said Lance is a little sore. Is that, is that, long, is that just a normal after bullpen soreness, or is that something that's going to keep him no, no, out for a while? No, we don't know. We don't know yet. I What's mean, sore, like, specifically? Sore? Yeah, what is, like, what part of his body is sore? Just no, his no, elbow? Or yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. But it's not, the, it's not an alarm for you guys? No, not really. Yeah, I, mean, we'll, I mean, we'll have to, to see if we don't. We got to chill. Don't make something if you ask me. Yeah. Do you, view, uh, do you view center field as a competition in camp or is it Chaz? Or is Chaz no, there's competition. Yeah, there's competition uh, all over the field. And now, there's a few places in that competition. But, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we hope Myers bounces back, you know, from the injury. We'll see how Chaz looks. Um, and there's room for everybody to play. As you know, I, I, I play everybody. Dusty, what is Mark Team Oh, he means a lot. I mean, you know, he's he's a he's a professor back there. Uh, the guys love throwing to him, and plus, he's uh, here to teach you know the young guys uh, and hone their skills, hopefully on a, in, in an advanced way. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he means a lot. I mean, these guys are you know they follow him, and uh, he's looking good. He came off this man. He had to show me how. Which way do you go? He's looking good. Do you have any, do you have any idea how much longer you want to keep managing? I don't know. Lord to tell me, and my body to tell me. And uh, so, I do know I got I got this year. Does how do you feel about the backup catcher situation? Uh, well, I mean, it remains to be seen. That's 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 competition too. So we'll see who we think is the most advanced, the most, you know, which guys are ready, which guys need to play. Some guys, sometimes you just need to play. And uh, so, and and then we'll see which guys, in case Molly gets hurt, you know, and then, uh, and then we'll see. Uh, everything just depends on just, you know, here's a ball and just go play. It does give you follow basketball. Bregman's a basketball coach in tonight's celebrity game. Any any coaching pointers that you're sharing with your guy? Well, I don't know. Not really. I, I heard he's coaching, but I can't see I can't see Briggy having no heck of a jump shot. <laughs> well, he's not playing. He's just coaching. I'm glad of that. <laughs> he's got to coach something, though, right? 
Yeah, you know Braggy. <laughs> he kills me. <laughs> hey, Dusty, you was there for you? Yeah. 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 He, he reported that? Yeah, yeah. He reported actually before me. Really? He reported February the 2nd. And I got here the 10th. And so. No, no, I got here the 11th. Yeah, yeah. He's doing pretty good. Dusty, I was at Brady was here yesterday. And, uh, yeah. How excited are you to see what he can bring? When well, we know what he can bring. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we just got to keep him healthy. And, and keep him, you know, he's a slim. Uh, uh, which of Brady? You got a. Uh, Jose. Jose Brady. Okay. Jose, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, we got a couple of Brady's yeah. now. Yeah. And, uh, Jose no. was here yesterday. Oh, yeah, we know what he can do. I mean, I mean, this, he's been doing it for a long time. And, uh, you know, he works hard. They told me that he was coming up here from Miami at 6 o'clock in the morning. Just, uh, you know, we just maybe got to slow him down a little bit. I know, you know, we got to, we got to, Six weeks to go, you know. So, and, and, and you know, he knows himself. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he knows himself better than we know him. Yeah. So, what about the fact you've had a, a, a number, several uh, position players reporting lately, like Brady, like Michael Brantley, Jeremy Pena? What does that mean to you? These guys coming out here that early, almost a week early. Well, I mean, they know, like, like Michael's trying to get ready. Brady knows what it takes to get ready. Uh, Pena's trying to get ready for the WBC and our season at the same time. So, you know, different guys have different reasons for coming early, you know. And uh, uh, personally, when I was playing, I, I, I didn't never like to come too early because I know what I needed after a while, you know, to, you know, to get ready to play. So, um, yeah, I mean, I welcome those guys who come early. Um, I just don't welcome too many guys showing up late. How does Brantley look to you? I haven't seen him. I mean, he looks good. Michael always looks good. But I've, I've, I've got reports, you know, that he's looking good. And uh, he's swinging. And he hit back-to-back -back days. I'm, I'm not worried about Michael Brantley. I mean, not at all. I mean, I'm so glad he's here because I see him sitting around talking to some of the young players and, you know, kicking some knowledge with them. So I'm, I'm glad we re-signed Michael Brantley. So there you have it, Dusty Baker in his own words talking about um, he starts out with um, Lance McCullers saying that he was a little sore. We have been hearing about the elbow soreness and Dusty Baker doesn't seem to be concerned about it. Of course, I know um, instantly when a fan hears about Lance McCullers and a sore elbow that we just harken back to the different um, procedures or injuries or time off that he's had. And of course, we are hoping that uh, Lance McCullers Jr. has a healthy year and has a successful year. We want to see Lance on the mound all year long, even in the postseason, being effective. Um, before I break down any of this any further, I need to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bar is an amazing protein bar. And let me tell you, when you say protein bar, some people cringe or grit their teeth a little bit because they don't know what they're getting. Well, let me tell you what you're getting. You're getting something that's healthy. You're getting something that's wrapped in 100% real chocolate, and you're getting something that's actually doesn't pack on the calories or the fat that a candy bar would. But when you eat it, you think you're eating a candy bar. They have flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. And so I'm not sure how they do it, but they pack in the macro macros like the Houston Astros coming back for a second title. That's right, only 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around for a box. You don't have to go to justbuilt.com, which you still can. You can go to Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right, head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up your four box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. Just know that you're going to thank me later. Built Bar, the best bar in the biz. So, Dusty Baker talked about a few things. Again, Lance McCullers is a little bit sore after his bullpen. Um, Hunter Brown, his plans for Hunter Brown is he wants Hunter Brown to win, that he thinks. Hunter Brown is going to go into uncharted territory, and we've already heard word that he will have a shot at the five-man rotation this spring. And so um, Hunter Brown knows that that's not something that's under his control, that he's just got to go out and grind, and he even said that um, in an interview. And we, we may play um, – I may do another 
um, episode that we'll post with some Filmaton sound and um, just some other things, sights and sounds from around the ballpark. But the center field competition is an interesting one because basically he's not saying that it's Chaz McCormick's. He's basically saying there's competition. And it's probably a smart play on his part as manager because he knows Chaz McCormick is the lead guy, but he doesn't want to say it's his to lose or it's, and I think he may have said that in the past, but right now he's got to give a vote of confidence to Jake Myers. Apparently Jake Myers, um, him and his wife had, had a baby. So he's got that dad strength. I think Chandler Rome mentioned that in one of his articles. Um, seriously, you need to follow, you need to follow Brian McTaggart, Chandler Rome, Mark Berman, all these guys on social media, what they write up. Um, Eric does stuff for Gallery Sports. Um, check that out. John McClain does stuff for Gallery Sports. Just go. I mean, there are so many outlets that are give, giving y'all Astros information. We're just happy that y'all come here and make us your first listen every day because you wear your team every day. But the center field competition is going to be interesting because we have Dearden in the background trying to make it up to the big leagues. We have Pedro Leone in the background. And then Dana Brown even said today, I don't have the clip, but he said today, that he's going to challenge Gilbert to get up here as quick as he can. Now, I don't know that that means Gilbert will see the field in 2023 at Minute Maid Park, but in 2024, I think I think Gilbert's calling will be here. And so Drew Gilbert is definitely on the radar of the Houston Astros and the new GM of Dana Brown. Um, Dusty Baker was also asked again, like, how much longer? And he said, look, as long as the Lord will allow me. And look, if Dusty Baker – wins a second title there's no reason to think that they won't bring him back for a third run at it because why not and if he's doing good and this team's come together and jose abreu and everything worked out then i don't see why you wouldn't and then he's asked about martin maldonado and and you know we bang the martin maldonado drum a lot and i know there's a lot of people who are um, super critical of him and his skill set or declining skill set his lack of offense but I'll just go with the words of Jeff Bagwell. Jeff Bagwell said the guy believes he can hit, so I'm going to let him hit. And he has so much value behind the plate. He is that field general. And remember, he's now having to prepare these guys not only to get ready for the World Baseball Classic, but to get ready for new rules, to get ready for a whole new season. And so Maldonado is that professor, like Dusty Baker said. And kind of talking about the backup catcher situation as well, is he said, look, we need to let, let the competition play out. We need to see who hones in their skills, who really dials it up. And I think Diaz has the upper hand when it comes to offense. I think Lee has the upper hand when it comes to defense. But one of those guys is going to have to um, overtake the other. And in a competition between two players that are very likable players, it is difficult for me to choose who I want. I would love to see Diaz's bat, how he plays a DH role when he's not catching, but I don't know how much playing time he's going to get. But then again, Corey Lee deserves all the respect of what he has and being the top catching prospect for the Houston Astros. So that's going to play out there in spring training. We are going to see, I think, some really good competitions. And he even spoke about Michael Brantley being back and being the professor and being the mentor to the Houston Astros, to the younger players, and just having him back in camp is a really key thing. Um, I just I wanted to come on and share Dusty's thoughts on spring training, on um, what he's saying about how he's feeling for the year, how he is looking at repeating how he feels about Lance, how he feels about Hunter Brown, and so many other things. So thank you all for tuning in to Locked on Astros. I'm H.J. Wheelhouse with Locked on Astros. You can find me at H.J. Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We're always positive, always Strohs. For myself, Eric Man Heisman, and everybody here at Astros, thanks for hanging out with me, and y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Go Strohs.